tonight. We have a very special show for you. It's the ninth day of Av. The candles are lit. All of us sitting here on low stools or on the floor. I'm happy that you chose to turn your radio on this evening because we're presenting a show, we shouldn't call it a show, a very special program uh, for the first time in, uh, I think we could say in the history of uh, radio in New York anyway, we're Tisha above night. On this night when you're really not allowed to learn Torah, there are only special Gemaras dealing with the destruction of the temples and the other tsaras, the other bad things that happen to our nation, those are the places that we're allowed to explore on this night and that's what we're going to be presenting uh, tonight to you uh, Rabbi Dr. Moshe Hamnik has been kind enough to uh, prepare this program for us it was in the summer of 1973 when I was at Camp Morris that I first heard the Tish above teachings and stories uh, from Rabbi Moshe Hamnik, the entire student body of Camp Morris were sitting around Rabbi Moshe Hamnik every moment that they were not learning, that they were not davening, they were sitting and listening, re-listening to the stories from the different Gemaras which traditionally Jews uh, explore on Tisha For those of you that are going to be in the Catskills tomorrow. Uh, here tonight and there tomorrow. Please drive carefully, extra carefully, if you are going to the Catskills. And then stop into Camp Morris and you'll be able to uh, listen to these teachings tomorrow. The teachings that you're going to listen to tonight are what's happening at Camp Morris this evening. I also mentioned to you that on the ninth day of Av, that's the 21st day of Moshe Rabbeinu's going up, to Har Sinai uh, after the Chet of the Eagle, the sin of the Golden Calf, uh, to win over the Rebbein Shalom's favor. Also, five occurrences happened on this uh, day, which we commemorate. Uh, the Miraglum caused, the, the spies caused the people to cry for nothing, and that's why this was decreed from heaven to be a day of crying for our people. And we, it was enacted that we, our forefathers would not go into the land of Israel, the generation of the desert. And the second and third thing is the destruction of the second temple and the first temple and the second temple. And the fourth uh, commemoration of the day is the capture of the city of Beitar, where many uh, Jewish warriors were slaughtered. And the fifth thing to remember is that Jerusalem was overrun on this day. Just before we go to Rabbi Hamnik, uh, notes, uh, the sponsors of this show, uh, are bringing to you, for the first time ever, this kind of a show on Tisha B'Av Night, and they deserve mention. I'm talking about Zim Electronics, one of my fine sponsors at 48th Street and 13th Avenue in uh, Bellow Park. And uh, if you are going to Israel, if you're in from Israel for the summertime, or if you have children that you're going to visit in Israel, or if you're making Aliyah, please visit Zim's for all your 220 volt appliances. They have a tremendous selection. Zim ships door to door to Israel for hundreds of people just like you each and every day. Zim's Electronics, 48th Street and 13th Avenue. And uh, their telephone number is 436-6600. And uh, also remember that Quality Broadloom and Carpet is the place to go to for all your carpet uh, needs. Uh, all summer long, uh, they are open serving the community, the Jewish community, and trying to serve you a little better each day. Their address is 814 Coney Island Avenue in Flatbush or 4403 13th Avenue in Borough Park. Visit Quality Broadloom and Carpet for all your carpet needs. And now it's my privilege to present to you Rabbi Dr. Moshe Hamnik. By way of explanation for the excessive punishments described involved in the destruction of the temple and in some of the other destructions that we cry about in the Kinos, I like to understand it by an explanation of Rabbi Aaron Cutler, who, who once explained 
how come a ben soro umoro uh, the the child that that steals from his father and mother and steals wine and and meat and his he gets a sentence more severe than the crime he committed because uh, we are told that in his in the future he is going to end up stealing and murdering and he he raises the question that the punishment which he gets which is skila which is stoning is more severe than the murderer receives which is uh, by the sword uh, death by the sword and he explains that when someone undertakes an evil road the the punishment for undertaking an, an evil road is much more severe than any individual crime on that road. Even more severe than the maximum point of evil that he's going to reach. He's going to be a murderer, but his punishment is even more severe than that. In the like manner, Rabbi Zatzal would warn that we have to realize that choosing the road of life is one of the key issues to life. If we choose a road of evil, it is punishable by, in a more severe way than any individual evil. And on the good side, if we pick, pick a road of goodness, if we pick to live by God and by his teachings, the blessing will be greater than any individual good that we do on that road. The blessings will be the for the choice of the road will multiply the blessings many fold over the individual choices on that road and that's the only way we can understand the excessive punishments of the Chorban that it is an ad admonishment for picking not only individual wrong sins for picking the wrong road I want to thank Rabbi Moshe Hamnik for the introduction. And after the following messages, we will begin to uh, learn Torah with Rabbi Moshe Hamnik. And I, what I want you to do immediately is to go to your cabinets and take out a Gemara Gittin. Take out a Gemara Gittin and you turn it to Daf Nun Hey. That's Daf 55. You can even follow with an English Gemara. If you have an English Gemara, Again, Daf Nun Hei Amit Beis, that's uh, the 55th page, the second side. And uh, down on the bottom, by the two dots, the first words are Amar Rav Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan says, that's where we're going to begin. First, I want to tell you about the uh, great savings, again, at, uh, on Anderson Windows through R&R &R Lumber and Building Supplies. I want to remind you that there are over a hundred styles to choose from uh, in Anderson windows and also there's a special sale going on right now on sheet paneling for your bathrooms and for your kitchens, 4x8 foot sheets for only $9.50. R&R Lumber and Building Supplies will cut your lumber to size. They also have a special on boards right now, 2x3, 7 footers for only 89 cents each. And keep in mind that uh, R&R &R Lumber and Building Supplies of Williamsburg at 37 Harrison Avenue is one of the leading sukkah uh, manufacturers in the country, in the world even. R&R &R Lumber and Building Supplies will give you a beautiful wood sukkah for this coming sukkah season. So that's something to look forward to on this uh, night of, of sadness. And look forward to a sukkah that's something wonderful. 37 Harrison Avenue, again, is their address. Uh, one more important uh, message uh, from the Millers. Uh, incidentally, it's important to be aware that uh, we still don't eat meat after Tisha B'Av until the, uh, at least uh, after the afternoon of the 10th of, the of Av. So for after the fast, tomorrow night, uh, you should still eat dairy products and uh, that's why you uh, shop uh, at Miller's Famous Cheese Store. If you're in Borough Park, their location is at 5214 13th Avenue. Keep in mind that they have a great... 
Umaksha Libai Yipo Bara. Rav Yechanan says, this that it says, fortunate is the person that is always in fear and the man who is overconfident falls into evil. Akansu Bakansu Chod of Yerushalayim. Because of this minor difference between the name Kamsa and the name Bar Kamsa, Yerushalayim was destroyed. Atanagula Vitanagulta, Chorov Turmalka. Because of a male and a female chicken, Haramelech was destroyed. Asara Dorispik, Chorov Betar. Because of the side of a woman's chariot, the city of Betar was destroyed. So we see how important it is for a person to be constantly in fear of even minor issues, to see to it that even minor issues should not go wrong, because from minor things could come out great negatives if they're left neglected. Tulsos raises the question that from this Pasuk one would get the impression, and from the use of the Pasuk, as though fear is a positive. Ashe Adam Mefachet Tamid. Fortunate is the person who is always afraid. And Taisa says we had a Gemara in Brachos, Samach Amad Aleph, which indicates that someone who was in fear was considered a sinner, as it says, Pachtu B'Tzion Chatoim, that the, the sinners are the ones who are in fear, and fear is a negative. And Tysus says that there is a time when fear is a positive, and uh, an example where somebody is afraid not to forget his learning, and he reviews his learning, as the Gemara answers over there, or here, fear would have been a pach, a, a positive that in the, uh, if they would have had enough fear not to embarrass Bar Kamsa, or they, they would have taken in consideration the, pos the possible ramifications, some of the negatives would not have come out of it. I was thinking a little carry-off on Tulsa's idea that there's two types of fear. There's, there's a debilitating fear, and there's an energizing fear. The fear that's energizing, that, that helps the person do what he has to do, that's a positive. The, the debilitating fear, the fear that's used against the person, that's associated with the sinners. And it's the positive fear that we're interested in encouraging, the fear that will cause the person to be a little more careful, a little more considerate, and will cause the person to deal with minor issues with a look to their future ramifications. The Gemara is now proceeding to explain these three incidents, and the one dealing with the destruction of Yerushalayim will come first, and the next piece of Gemara will deal mainly with the destruction of Yerushalayim. Akamsu bar kamsa chor of Yerushalayim. Dahu gavra derachme kamsa ubal devave bar kamsa. Because of kamsa and bar kamsa, Yerushalayim was destroyed because there was this man who was a friend of kamsa and an enemy of bar kamsa. I recall as a young boy in Yerushalayim listening to the Maggid of Yerushalayim, Ben Sian Yadla, who was an institution in himself, who was over a hundred years old, and there were institutions named after him, there were schools named after him, and he would, he was uh, only able once a year to come out and give a drasha, and he raised the question, why should Kamsa be included in this terrible remark of being the cause of the destruction of Jerusalem. As the story will later relate, only Bar Kamsa was the mover in, and the cause of the destruction. Why is Kamsa mentioned? And the second question was, 
the name Kamsa seems to have some significance. It, it means to hold back, to be stingy, uh, as, it's, as it's used in, in Jewish, a Kamsen. And, and, and he said that Kamsa is one generation and Bar Kamsa is the next generation. Bar means the child of, like Bar Mitzvah. Uh, and Kamsa, Kamsa was the first generation and he decided to be stingy with his Judaism and said, why should I close my store like my father did so much earlier than the Shabbos? I could move the, to the letter of the law. I don't have to sacrifice for the spirit of the law. And he opened his store to the very last minute of Shabbos in the tzniyas of his of his wife, he, he went to the letter of the line, to the minimum requirement. And then all of a sudden he was shocked to see that his son moved still further to Chil Shabbos, to, to going beyond, the, to breaking even the letter of the law of, of modesty in, in clothing. And, and he blamed that son. And Achachonim say, don't blame the son. The father who was stingy and moved to the bare minimum, to the bare letter of the law, undermining the spirit of the law, he is the one that has de deprecated the, the tradition, and he is the one that undermined the beauty of Yiddishkeit. And therefore there was a Bar Kamsa who was actually attacking the letter of the law. It's the spirit of the law that has to be protected as well as the, as the letter of the law. Akamsu bar kamsu chor of Yerushalayim. Thank you very much, Rabbi Moshe Hamnik, and we'll be right back with Rabbi Moshe Hamnik. This is Dov Shuren, and this is your Jewish alternative to television radio show with a very special show for this uh, night of sadness and tears for our people the Jewish people, the ninth day of the month of Av. We'll be right back with some more of the uh, important uh, stories from the Gemara and Gittin dealing with uh, the uh, destruction of our temples and the reasons which caused them the destructions. But first, another message from one of our sponsors, Cheese and Things. Let's give them some acknowledgement, Shuki and Ellie and those um, fine uh, Jews over at Cheese and Things that uh, work very hard to make life a little bit easier for today's uh, modern-day Rebbitzin. The, um, the women, the Jewish women, many of them, uh, having uh, quite a few children, but at the same time, uh, it's not enough for their husbands to, to uh, work. They, they also have to go and, and work. In today's society, both men and women, have, both men and wife have to go out into the workaday world sometimes to make ends meet. And sometimes there just isn't enough time to uh, cook, to stay in the kitchen, and to prepare everything. That's why cheese and things can help you by offering the white fish salads and then cheese spreads and a very large selection of cheese and then there's the tuna fish salad and chopped herring salad and everything else that's not to talk about food uh, during uh, you know the the tissue above holiday i feel funny about it but again i've got to acknowledge the sponsors that have put this show here cheese and things 1117 avenue j telephone number 377 49 11 377 49 if you think that uh, it sounds a little funny talking about cheese and things uh, during uh, the uh, tissue above commemoration how about talking about meat and house of glot I'm going to do that also, yes. I'm going to acknowledge my lone Crown Heights sponsor that certainly will not give you meat, uh, you know, during the nine days, but uh, after the nine days are over, uh, culminated with the Tish above commemoration today and tomorrow, House of Glad will certainly be open for your Shabbos needs. And uh, when, uh, incidentally, I will be open also tomorrow night after Tisha B'Av uh, for my, with my Shabbos warm-up show because we don't dwell on, on Tisha B'Av uh, 
uh, more than the, the time necessary, and then we go right into Shabbos this year. And uh, so it's important to know how to prepare for Shabbos properly, and the way to do that is by lighting uh, candles, as the Lubavitcher Hasidim always stress, and also with the Lubavitcher Shechita meets of House of Glot to 385 Kingston Avenue in Brooklyn, and their telephone number of House of Glot is 4679411. That's 4679411, hours from 8 to 6, and they do deliver. Let's go back now uh, for the next eight minutes before we break for news to Rabbi Moshe Hamnik continuing the Gemara. And keep in mind that uh, after the news break of five minutes, we'll be on right up until 12 o'clock with these uh, special Gemaras in Gittin. According to the Maharal, it's possible to answer the, the same question in another way. As we stated, this person was a friend of Kamsa and an enemy of Bar Kamsa. And we're saying that because of both Kamsa and Bar Kamsa, Yerushalayim was destroyed. The Maral explains that we know that in the time of the second base of Migdish, the destruction of the second base of Migdish, Achachonim tell us, came about because of sinus chinam, a, a, a dislike of one another without a basis, uh, a hate without a basis. But the Maral explains even a deeper point. He explains that there were friendships, but the friendships were rooted in, in hate. The friendships were rooted in exclusion of others. The friendships themselves were a clickiness of a sort. And in that sense, he was a friend of Kamsa, and he was an enemy of Bar Kamsa. But there was as much evil in the friendship of Kamsa as the evil of the hatred of Bar Kamsa. Because the friendship itself wasn't that friendship that the Torah is trying to create, that sharing, that, that caring, that humanism that the Torah is trying to create. It was a friendship cr creating a clique against another. That kind of a friendship is a negative in itself. If that is the sinus chinam itself, that is the very negative that we that is destroying the temple. The friendship of Kamsa was as an equal negative to the hatred of Bar Kamsa. Very interesting Maral, indeed. And I want to thank Rabbi Moshe Hamnik, uh, who will be back with us again after the news break with more Torah and the Gemara and Gittin. If you're just tuning in, please get a Gemara and you'll be able to follow along. Daf Nun Hei Ahmed Bey's 55B as we are now well into Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av in the year Tav Shim Mem Bey's 5,742 and hopefully as we hope every day that the Mashiach will arrive and this will certainly be our last Tisha B'Av of the sadness. It's, uh, I don't know if I've noted yet that um, during uh, Tisha B'Av, uh, in the days of the second Beis Hamikdash, in the days when the second temple was built, the 420 years uh, of the second uh, temple, uh, how exactly was uh, Tisha B'Av commemorated? Well, there's a um, Gemara, Rosh Hashanah, Afyid Chesam, and Aleph, I think, on the base, uh, mentions that, uh, that uh, at the time that uh, the base of Migdash, there was um, second base of Migdash, uh, they... Uh, Tisha B'Av was, was a happy day, half a day. And they feasted and drank. And in the second half of the day, they read Kinas uh, and commemorated the destruction of the first base of Migdash and the bad things that happened on the day. But it was certainly good times uh, for the Jewish people. 
And uh, therefore, Tisha B'Av was not a sad day. So the Rebbein Shalom should help that we should have uh, good times real quickly and in our days. And Tisha B'Av will become a Yom Tov. Incidentally, that's why we don't say Tachman on Tisha B'Av. Because in a way, Tisha B'Av is a, a Yom Tov and is destined to be a Yom Tov. Uh, Eastern Paper uh, is one of our sp sponsors, been with us for a long time. want to make mention of uh, the wonderful items that you can buy at Eastern Paper, the uh, plastic plates and the cutlery and the you know, plastic uh, bowls, uh, the uh, aluminum foil, aluminum pans, tissues, and many other items, party items uh, at Eastern Paper. It's a happy store. Certainly not the uh, kind of place that we can uh, talk about for too long on Tisha B'Av, but uh, we can give you their address at 1470 39th Street, ample free parking, uh, and they also rent tables and chairs. My friend Nanasha and his staff will serve you well. Please try Eastern Paper for all your paper good needs, and you will continue to shop Eastern Paper. 1470 39th Street in Borough Park, Brooklyn. A uh, most delightful full store for, to shop in in Flatbush is uh, Geffen's. Geffen's Fine Foods on Avenue J at 1213 Avenue J. At Geffen's Air Conditioned Store, the scent of dried fruits and nuts and imported Israeli products make you feel like you're touring the Jerusalem marketplace. That's certainly somewhere where I'd like to be right now. And their prices are very reasonable. they make you feel right at home. Geffen's, 1213 Avenue J. They have sales right now on Miller's uh, American and Munster cheeses, $2.79 a pound. Ireland cheese, $2.99 a pound. Jerusalem Ebon cheese, $3.29 a pound. There's very fine apple juice, half gallon for $1.39. And a lot of other items. Remember that uh, the letters Geffen, Gimel Feinun, stand for Gesund, Parnassa, and Nachas. And you'll have all of those by visiting Geffen's 1213 Avenue J, and keep in mind that on Thursdays and Fridays they have baked goods from Schick's Bakery in Borough Park. Okay, it's time to break for news, and we'll be right back after the news with more of our special Tish Above um, production program. This is WNYM, 1330 AM in New York, and I'm Dove Schoen. Stay tuned now for Larry Gordon and the latest news. Good evening, this is news from WNYM. I'm Larry Gordon. A new ceasefire is in effect this evening in Lebanon. Details after this. When you visit the Home Iraq Hotel, do you know what you'll find? You'll find people having the greatest time ever. You'll find children cheerfully at play, singles joyfully mingling away, couples laughing and playing it up all day. Young and old, everyone at the Home Iraq enjoying a wonderful day. Because David Bin's Home Iraq is the number one, yes, the number one glot kosher hotel in the Catskills. Don't just take my word for it, compare for yourself. In addition to great facilities like skiing, tobogganing, indoor and outdoor pools, indoor and outdoor tennis, indoor miniature golf, and much, much more, the Home Iraq is the only glot kosher hotel Hotel in the Catskills with indoor racquetball, bicycling, their own bowling alleys, indoor ice skating, baseball field, and their own rifle range. And the Homo Act keeps strict Sabbath observing policies. There's a beautiful summer ahead for you at the Homo Act Hotel. Make reservations now by calling David Mintz Homo Act at 212 279 7250 or out of town 1 800 431 9035. The seventh ceasefire of the war in Lebanon went into effect this evening after 30 hours of continuous shelling of West Beirut by Israeli forces from air, land, and sea. Israel said this evening it would no longer fire at the PLO unless fired upon first. After meeting with Prime Minister Begin this morning, U.S. Special Envoy Philip Habib returned to Beirut. After today's meeting, Begin told the group of American Jews that Habib had promised to let him know within 48 hours if the PLO will leave West Beirut. Begin said the PLO must leave Beirut immediately. So take care that all the terrorists leave Beirut and Lebanon. None of them will be left.